All right, we've got a very interesting article by Velon, which I saw this morning. So if you didn't know, Velon, basically, they have these little black boxes under the saddle which record all of the people's power. Now, Chris Truman is quite clever because it, during some of the stages, his would just come up as 350 watts, 89 cadence for, like, the whole stage, descending go, uh, on the flats and climbing. But um, apparently, he got some good data. So this is basically the average power in his attack was 397 watts. So we'll get into the, into the deets before. So before, wow, one thing I'll tell you straight away is that in reality, they don't like to show the real strength of pro riders, so they just show selected bits of it. So we don't get the average power for the whole climb, no, because that would just blow people's mind, and we, we weren't, we're not allowed to see that. So instead, we, we're just allowed to see the attack. But anyway, so for nine... For a 9.3% gradient, 3 kilometers, he averaged 400 watts. So he's already been climbing for maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, probably at like threshold for him. So maybe, maybe like, probably not threshold, probably like 380, 370. But in this, when it's this late in the race, I mean like everyone's just absolutely cooked. But anyway, so 397, well say Chris Froome's probably 66 kilos more or less. I mean, maybe a little bit more. But he, so he had basically held 6 watts per kilo for the last, uh, last, like three kilometers, which is about 11 minutes or something, um, which, you know, to be honest, isn't that crazy. But I think the thing you have to think about is that this was after a very hard stage in stage 20. Stage 19 was pretty hard. They've been racing for so long. Like at the end of a grand tour, the numbers aren't crazy. They're not going to blow your mind like outright. Like I could do six watts per kilo for 10 minutes, like in this moment in time. But what I couldn't do is do six watts per kilo after climbing that mountain just on that stage. So I got like the Colo de la Finestra. I also couldn't do it having done that stage or a week before or two weeks before, let alone like the whole Grand Tour. Um, it's absolutely nuts. Um, so you can see this is pretty interesting. Chris Froome, stage three, irrelevant, really. Stage four, Monte Zonkalan. Again, this is pretty interesting because generally the stage, it was chaotic but not crazy. So you've got a pretty good uh, sort of like gauge of how strong these guys really are. So he averaged 465 watts for his 1.3 kilometer attack, which when you think about Montezongalan, I mean, it's pretty much a 12% average climb for 10 kilometers. And so you're not really gonna go like way into the red. So, I mean, his average for the stage, probably 400, 420 maybe, something about that, around six watts per kilo for the 40 minutes would be, a, would be my prediction for the old Froome dog. Uh, so then Chris Froome lost more time the day after, and then the Colo de la Finestra, 400 watts for 11 minutes. Solid. And then he did some good descending. But you can see people are cooked, like, everyone's absolutely, like, on their knees at the end. Like, no one's, no one's banging out six and a half watts per kilo for 20 minutes, like, fresh like this. Like, they're, they're all absolutely cooked. Uh, and you can see we've got some more relevant speeds. Like, like, just no one cares about the speeds. Like, average speed, okay, for the whole stage, yeah, that's interesting. Like, 35k an hour is pretty hilly one, uh, so that's some good average speeds. But, like, come on, like, you want your numbers. You want your numbers. Uh, maybe sprint stage is it's interesting. Uh, and then this stage 20, so last stage, this is actually, we've got some real good deets here. So 31 minutes, he held, like, 280 watts. Like, irrelevant, irrelevant. Not, they, also, they don't say normalized. Like, let's be honest, 280 watts riding for... 31 minutes is real easy, like, a lot of, I mean, anyone can do that pretty much, I mean, if you've got a bit of fitness, like, uh, a lot of people can do that, the thing that's incredible is the normalized, I'd say normalize that maybe 320, 330, and it's like, if you've ever had a normalized of 330 watts, I mean, like, it's, it's big, it's a big boy, um, maybe you could do that for an hour if you're fresh, if you're a decent, like, uh, first cat in the UK, or, like, decent racer, but doing that mid-stage, at the end of the Giro, is a slightly different story, so for the first three kilometers, 380 watts, so that's, technically below Chris Room's threshold, but it's probably, yeah, so it's not, not too hard for him. Depends what he estimates his threshold at, but at this point in the race, it's sort of like the threshold is so relevant because they're also cooked that it's not really like, yeah, it's just not really relevant anymore. That's why when people are like, oh, you just look at your pound, it's like, well, yeah, but I mean, how can you, you have to know your sensations and how you feel. Like if you're suddenly thinking, oh, I'm just going to do a threshold effort and do like an hour um, close to my threshold, it's like, well, yeah, but you're so far into the race, there's no way you're going to be able to do that. So the guys really do know their bodies when they pace it. And that's really why when you're a pro rider, you don't need a power meter as much because you just know your body so well. If you're an amateur, like it's obviously a lot more useful. But anyway, you can see here, nine minutes, he held 420 watts. So you can see that the stage definitely wasn't as hard. Um, and he also, he still knew that this was the last climb so he could extend a little energy. He did some, he did a couple of attacks, only hit 760 watts, which for Froome, I mean, having looked at some of his other power data on, like, um, on some of the other races, he does hit 1,000 watts. So this wasn't a complete full gas attack necessarily, but also he's probably a little bit cooked. 
Uh, but there was a three minute period where he averaged 450 watts, which is big. But just look at these, these so one minute 33 at 540 watts. That, that's big, like that, that is a big boy. Um, if we get the old calculatores out, 540 divided by, well, not 540 divided by 66 is, uh, yeah, about eight watts per kilo for, um, eight watts per kilo for a minute and 33, which is, uh, I'm not sure many people can do that fresh, let alone mid-mountain stage. And then he does another um, 30 seconds. Uh, so, the, sorry, these are both 30 seconds, not a minute. Uh, but yeah, eight watts per kilo from, it's pretty solid, and then probably settles back down into a good tempo. 280 watt average power for five hours and 50. That is actually obscene. Like, that is actually just huge numbers because his normal is 350, 360 maybe. So, and that may be a little bit lower just because normalized in mountain stages is always a little bit worse just because you get a lot of freewheeling where it's like zero watts. So it, it does sort of take it down a little bit. But that's like real solid. So you can see here that like Chris Froome is a beast. To be able to do these numbers at the end of the Giro is pretty pretty insane. Is he on some good stuff? 100% guaranteed. Is Damuna on some good stuff? Yes. Uh, but that shouldn't really take away from it. Like, it doesn't really matter what they're on. It's just incredible to see, like, that the peak of human performance, which really is this. I mean, like, if you try and, like, simulate how much training stress they've had, like, and then try and hit these numbers, it's just impossible. Like, I, I, I don't understand how they can just be so strong so late on in a race. Like, they're, they're pretty close. Like, their threshold and, like, what they could hold for 20 minutes, let's say, maybe drops by 5-10%. But after racing for this long, it's insane. And like just making sure everything is right, making sure you eat after every stage right, making sure you eat during the stage so you're not bonking at the end of the stage and like needing more energy to recover, making sure just like you're sleeping well every day. Imagine getting like two, like three weeks of perfect sleep. Like obviously they use sleeping pills and stuff because it's just obviously that makes sense. But even so, it's just like there are so many things that go into the Grand Tour to make sure that you can hit these numbers. But when you just look at them, um, it's just insane, like 420 watts for nine minutes in the middle of a stage, like at the end of a grand tour. It's just, it's just really, it's quite crazy. Like I think most people couldn't hit that number, just one stage, like flat stage, then mountain, like not many people, let alone doing it after a hard stage and just during it. And I think until you've raced like a lot of week long stage races, which to be honest, I haven't raced that much, like that many stage races. Um, like you don't really understand, but like I could just I just can't even process like how incredible and how tired you must feel after doing like a six hour race and then another five hour race the day after and then another five hour race and then another four hour race and then maybe you get a rest day once. But like it's just absolutely nuts and all the stress imagine in their peloton or like the nerves in the final of the sprint stage getting in position. Like it's just it's just insane. Um like it really is. I don't think I don't think it's hard, to, you can really comprehend it until I guess you've done it. Um, and that's really what makes these Grand Tours so ridiculously like difficult and so ridiculously special to win them. Just because they're just such a combination of so many different things. It's not just your power of like one day. It's your power like at the end of three weeks, making sure that you peak at the right time and aren't as tired. Um, and that's one thing everyone's like, oh, you can't peak at the end of a Grand Tour. It's like, well, no, but you can be less tired than everyone else. Because if you come in with way more training stress, so you're at high fitness at the beginning, then you're going to tire more easily than if you're at a lower fitness, but have less fatigue. So your, your fitness might drop if you're the guy who's come in with great fitness. Your fitness might drop, let's say, 15%. And then if you're Chris Froome, it might only drop 5%. Therefore, Chris Room will be stronger than the other guy at the end of the race. However, obviously at the beginning, Chris Room will be weaker. And this is the thing that people seem to understand. It's not like Chris Room is getting faster. It's that other people are getting slower, quicker than him. Um, and I think like, yeah, obviously he's on some good stuff. And maybe he finally in the last week, he found what worked for him. And apparently he changed his saddle, you know, all sorts of things. But you, I mean, you just don't really know. But for sure, there's one thing you do know. Chris Room's won the Giro. Chris Room smacked everyone on that stage. Stage 19. That will go down in history for a long time. 80 kilometer breakaway with that little, just spinning away. Like Kenny, King Kenny just set it up and then Froome just soloed away. And that was it. Um, it was a pretty incredible race, really. The whole time, I thought Yates had it. Uh, but Yates, I think just the high mountains just are hard for him. Um, but anyway, he'll come back. He'll probably win the Giro of the Vuelta soon. Uh, but yeah, cheers for watching. 
I hope that all this power data is interesting. I hope more people post power data in the future from the top guys. Unfortunately, George Bennett didn't, too, didn't do too well this year, so we didn't have like real accurate data from the, from the finishes. Uh, but hopefully Chris Room will be like, yeah, actually, I want to I release all my power data. But um, I have a feeling that that is top secret and no one ever really wants to release that power data uh, when they turn into a big hitter because they think it will give away too much of their uh, ability. Um, so, yeah, we hopefully we'll have more data like this. And if I say any more power data I think is interesting, I'll, I'll be making a video about it. So cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next video.